for not leaving us, oh God, for not forsaking us, oh God, for always thinking of us, oh God. We thank you for calling us friend, oh God. We thank you, oh God, hallelujah, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs he'll bear. God, we thank you, oh God, for bearing the load for us, oh God. We thank you when it gets so heavy on us, oh God, that you will lift the burden. God, we thank you for being a burden lifter. Hallelujah. A heavy load sharer. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. Come on. I need some grateful people in the house this morning. Oh, hallelujah. If I had 10,000 tongues, it would be enough to tell them how much I appreciate. He didn't give me what I deserve. God, I thank you. Come on, come on. Let's give God some glory. You don't need no music to do it. You don't need no instructions to do it. When I think of the goodness of Jesus. I said, when I think of the goodness of Jesus. This old poor soul cries out. Hallelujah. A soul that you lifted up out of the muck and mire. God, I thank you for salvation. You could have left me in my past, but you pulled me out of darkness and called me into your wonderful life. Come on and thank him. And for this, I give you praise. And for this, for this, for this, I give you praise. We get tired real quick when we want when it's the clapping of our hands. Let us put our minds on him. I don't care even if you're at home. Focus on glory. Let the glory fill the room that you're in. Let the glory fill your house. I thank God that we serve a God that gave us no reason to be. He fights for us. Turn to your neighbor and say, he fights for you. He fights for you. So you have no reason to fear. He said, the battle is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. I have no reason to fear. Whatever it is that you're facing, the battle is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. Come on, come on, come on. You ought to be glad that you ain't got to lift a hand. You ain't got to argue with nobody at work. God has the final say. Come on, clap. If you believe it, come on, clap. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Tell me who has the final say.
that the Lord is your light and your salvation and you have no reason to fear. Open yes. your mouth and bless him. If you know that Jesus got you covered, come on, open your mouth and say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. If you know that Jesus got your back, Jesus will. He will. Everything that you need, Jesus can and he will. Turn to your neighbor and say, Jesus will. Jesus will.
We are expecting you to be here with us. I let your word flow, oh God, today. In Jesus' name, amen. Be reading the morning scripture coming from Revelations. Revelations chapter 22, verses 10 through 17. Revelations chapter 22, verses 
10 through 17. And it reads like this. And he said unto me, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers or whoremongers and murderers and adulterers and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Tell somebody he about to talk about me. Verse 17, and the spirit and the bride say, come and let him that hear say come and let him that is a thirst come and whosoever will let him take the water of life freely may the lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word this morning.
the world. Your troubles and trials. Your troubles and trials. They only come. Romans 8 18 it said it can't be compared to a glory there will be glory after this yeah come on if you believe that say oh Everything works together. Work together for the good of them. For the good of them. Ooh,
know he's already working it out on your job, in your home. He's already working it out. And even in the process, you're going to get to know more about Jesus. You're going to find out more about him. Once he works it out, you're going to know that it was nobody but him. You called your mother. You called your daddy. You called your best friend. Nobody had a solution. But I declare when you called on Jesus, when you called on Jesus, he worked it out. Celebrating 
October is National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And I don't know about you, yes, yes. But I thank God, if you are a breast cancer survivor, raise your hand if you don't mind, yes. If you are a cancer survivor, raise your hand. Hallelujah, God is good. God is good, God is indeed good. Bless the Lord on this morning. Get what you need. God's got it. God bless you in Jesus' name. Let's put our hands together and let's give God some praise this morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. God is good, isn't he? The Lord has been good to us. Therefore, praise is in order because God has showered his blessings down on us another week. And oh, that, oh, that men will give thanks unto the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful work to the children of men. It's offering time. to worship God in our giving and the Lord has blessed us even in the midst of this climate God has kept us and we give him the glory this morning amen because it's because of him that we have what we have amen and God is glorified and he has blessed us in every corner amen a thought just came to my mind this morning I thought I would share with you as the choir sung that song he's working it out God said if you walk it out he'll work it out can I get a witness? If you walk it out, he will work it out. Because he which have begun a good work in you shall perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. God's going to finish what he started. Can I get a witness? God don't start nothing and don't finish it. How do you, if God's got his hand on it, it is blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. As I said before, it's offering time and Amen. We come to give to the Lord to bless the house of God. Amen. In the name of the Lord, the Bible says, prove me now here with saith the Lord that if, if I will not open to you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you would not have room enough to receive. Amen. So as we stand upon our feet, get a good offering in your hands. And those that are joining us virtually, 
Amen. On the bottom of your screen, you will find ways to give, amen, to the kingdom of God. This is good ground. Amen. The Lord is working here. The Lord is moving here. Amen. Plant your seed, amen, into the blessing of God because your seed is being used to glorify the name of the Lord. Amen. So at this time, amen, we're going to prepare the blessed offering because it is blessed because all that we have, he has given us. And he has given us to us that we may give back to him in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your eternal word. Your words are spirit and they are life. They are the proof that you are the God that we serve and you will not forget us. You will not forsake us. Bless us now as we put seeds into the kingdom of God, as we plant seeds into this church, this ministry, this work, God. We ask that you would bless mightily, Lord, and return it unto us some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name, and let everyone say amen. Amen. And the, uh, the ushers are in the rear of the church. They will give you directions on how to come. Follow their directions in Jesus' name. you put those hands together won't you give the lord some praise he's worthy hallelujah bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name praise the lord everybody praise the lord everybody certainly he is worthy to be praised i love the lord how about you hallelujah i love him he is a wonderful savior we honor the lord jesus christ on this morning because he is the boss. 
Uh, he is the boss. And uh, to all of the men of God, our assistant pastor, to the elders and ministers, deacons, mothers, uh, and to all of the people of God, all of you who are here today, and those of you who have connected with us via live stream, we say praise the Lord to you also. Uh, and as you can see, we have, many of us have pink on uh, today in honor of breast cancer awareness. And those of you who have survived and those of you who are in the fight right now, we're praying for you. Yeah. Yes. And some of you may have lost loved ones due to breast cancer. We want you to know that we're lifting you up in prayer, uh, knowing that God can give you strength. He can bring comfort. Uh, we serve a mighty God. I said, we serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. And no matter what, God is good. I said, God is good all the time. And all the time. Father, we do love you so much and we're so grateful for this opportunity to come together and worship. And to glorify your wonderful, your victorious name. Who wouldn't serve a God like you? You've done so many things, opened so many doors, made so many ways. And we thank you for the privilege that you have given us even to feel your presence. Oh God, and we praise you for this opportunity to hear a word speak to us today. Speak to everybody in this building. Speak to those who have connected with us. Let your word ring loud and clear in our hearts and minds. Whatever is needed, we know that you will supply. Send your word, Lord, with power and demonstration of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, say it with me, in Jesus' name, amen. We have been in a series dealing with salvation. Um, the first installment came out of Titus chapter 3, verses 3 through 8 topic was we were like them and last week we were in Philippians chapter 2 verses 11 through 13 and the subject was never mind me what about you uh, and today we're in the book of Hebrews chapter 2 Hebrews in the second chapter and I'm going to read in your hearing verses 1 through 4 you have it, say amen. amen. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape? If we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto his by them that heard him. God also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and with miracles, diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word sanctified in our hearts that we may grow thereby. Verse number three, it says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him want you to make this statement before you sit down. Look at someone and say, my salvation means more to me than anything. You may be seated. My salvation means more to me than anything. Many times I've been reminded, whether it was by my own personal experiences or by what I've seen and heard of others going through, that this way is not always easy. 
I know there are those who try to make it appear as though it's always smooth and easygoing. But there are those of us in the household of faith who don't mind telling you the truth. Every day is not a good day. There are some difficult moments, and there are moments when we almost feel like giving up. And if I told the total truth, there have been times when some of us did give up. God had to come along and reconnect us and help us. You, you got some saints that won't admit it, but every day has not always been a mountaintop experience. It's not always easy. Look at somebody and say, it's not always easy. Some folks get upset when preachers talk like this because they want you to feel like they're clapping their hands every day, 24 hours a day, that they dance in their house just like they dance in this house. But there's some times when you feel like just letting go. But I must also proudly confess that I'm also reminded through Christ we are truly victorious. It's true. Even in the midst of temptation, we are strengthened through the word of God where he says there have no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Come on and testify and say, but God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but with that temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. We are afflicted at times and we go through some tough things, but even in the midst of this, Paul says these powerful words for our light affliction which is but for a moment worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. What makes then salvation so sweet is the fact that we have a God that walks every step of the way with us. Yeah. I don't know if you ever notice in the midst of worship sometimes you'll see people smiling and crying at the same time. You might see them dancing and crying at the same time, and it might seem confusing to you. Are they happy or are they sad? But you would have to know their story to understand what's going on. Yes. The first thing you have to understand is that the person you may be observing, they really should not be there at all. Had it been up to the enemy, they would not even be in that place where they can rejoice. Yeah. And the second thing you need to understand is the struggle was not just between them and the enemy, but part of the struggle was between them and themselves. And through all of that, God gave them the victory. Hallelujah. And this is sweet. There, there is a sweetness in this even in being able just to come into the house and sit down is a testimony to the fact that God is yet keeping us. He's a sweet savior. He's a sweet savior. Yet in all that I just discussed with you, there are those, hallelujah, in our environment who have given in to the pressure. Those who are yet struggling to the point where uh, they have a mindset that says perhaps there is another way. Perhaps there is a better way. And it is true because of the pressures and the problems and the disappointments. And by disappointment, I mean there are those who felt as though because they speak in tongues and because they claim salvation that everything is supposed to be just smoothed out. I can just coast all the way into heaven. Hallelujah. And this leads them to look for perhaps an easier way or for what they might deem as being a, a better way. Hallelujah. So they would be more comfortable as they gently ride into heaven. But 
uh, the apostles, according to the book of Acts, when they confirmed the people of God, they told them through much tribulation, you must enter in to the kingdom of God. Just because you love Jesus, you'll have to go through some things sometimes. Just because you gave up the world, you're going to have to go through some things sometimes. And by the way, there's no other way in. There's only one way. There's only one door. Hallelujah. And if you try to get in any other way, the Bible says then you are a thief and a robber. So help me preach and say there's only one way in. Yes, yeah, so don't despise it. Hallelujah. Don't throw up your hands. Don't allow the enemy to tempt you into that place of backsliding or walking away from the faith just because. Because you have a God that can help you through any and all situations. He's, he's that kind of God. Help me preach to somebody and say he's that kind of God. So, I've been talking about salvation for the last two weeks, so this is why we are admonished to work out our salvation, to walk the walk, as Elder Gorman forestated, to, to go through whatever it is we need to go through and trust God to live through us and lead us into all truth. He is a keeping God. He is a, the kind of God who is able to keep us from falling. He's, he's the kind of God that gives us perfect peace. He is the kind of God that becomes our strength when there is no strength. He becomes our satisfaction in the days when we're hungry and looking for things. He's, he's always there. How many of you understand what I'm saying? He's always there. Hallelujah. Even when I don't feel like raising my hands, he's there. Even perhaps when I don't feel like singing the song, he's there. And he has a way of uh, prompting me to raise my hand anyway. He has a way of prompting me to sing the song anyway. Hallelujah. And he whispers in our spirits and in our hearts and minds. He may say something like this, Lo, I'm with you always even until the very end of the world. I've read to you out of the book of Hebrews, and those of you who study the word may understand this, that when you read the book of Hebrews, it reads more like a sermon than an epistle. It, it gives you, hallelujah, the feeling that the writer of the book is really preaching a, a sermon to the people of God. And uh, he is writing, hallelujah, to some Hebrew Christians, some Jews who had been converted in to Christianity. One of the reasons why we feel perhaps this, uh, he is ministering in a powerful way is because in the 13th chapter, he says these powerful words, I urge you, my brothers and sisters, to pay attention to what I've written in this brief exhortation. And he's writing to Jewish Christians who were undergoing a persecution. Look down your row and say persecution. And not only were they going through, but they were very discouraged because, uh, hallelujah, of all of the things they were going through, one of the things that messed with them mentally was they were Jews. And they felt like, well, if I'm a Jew, at least my fellow Jews would treat me right, but the, the moment they said, I follow Jesus, it seemed like their friends became their enemies. Uh, I hear Brother Peter say, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you uh, as though some strange thing happened to you. Don't be surprised when folks turn on you. Don't, don't, 
don't even get it twisted. Hallelujah. Many times it's supposed to be that way. They're not upset so much because it's you. They're upset because they realize that there's something greater going on inside of you. And hallelujah, it's the enemy. It's nobody but the devil that, that wants you to feel as though when you step out of the world into God's kingdom, you made the wrong decision. But tell somebody the devil is a liar. The best decision I ever made was to follow Jesus. They were going through and there was much more to the persecution that many realize. There's an eminent scholar by the name of Adolf Safir who himself was a converted Jew that he tells us that it was sometime after Festus died that now Ananias was sitting on the throne in the year 63. He gives us the appropriate time. He says it was Ananias who favored the Sadducees in the church and uh, these Christian Hebrews were being persecuted as uh, transgressors of the law you know the Sadducees uh, hallelujah they ruled as it related to the law they held you to the letter we got some Sadducees in the church now they can quote the text but uh, they don't understand the power or the essence of the word and uh, so they were we're holding these Christian Jews now, you know, because at one time they were rocking and uh, with a talent on their head and quoting scriptures and moaning and groaning, but now they had the Holy Ghost and there was something stronger in their praise and these Jews got upset with them and now they're punishing them because they said that they broke the law. They're talking about about the grace of God and uh, they're serving this Jesus and uh, hallelujah they threw the law away and uh, never mind the truth was that Jesus came to fulfill the law and in him uh, hallelujah is the fullness of the Godhead bodily and when Jesus came he says behold I come in the volume of the book hallelujah help me preach I feel the Holy Ghost already and tell somebody all I need is Jesus <laughs> hallelujah that's all I need but uh, so they began to inflict pain on them understand uh, some of these believers now these these tongue talkers these Holy Ghost filled folk uh, some of them were being stoned because they refused to give up uh, Jesus they were stoned to death and uh, that's not all they were inflicted uh, hallelujah punishments they were called uh, apostates and uh, hallelujah they were treated as as though they were dirty and unclean and uh, they told them we'll let you come back in the temple if you give up your faith in Jesus Christ <laughs> hallelujah we'll give you back everything I'll give you back your title you can have your favorite seat in the church just denounce this Holy Ghost just, just walk away from this hallelujah and we'll give you back everything hallelujah they, could you imagine I can't come to church because I have the Holy Ghost could you imagine hallelujah you don't want me to sit here because my life has been changed. They were banished from the altar. They were banished. They could not make sacrifice on the altar anymore. And the writer of Hebrews is scratching his head and saying some of the stuff y'all are upset about, you should be dancing in the streets. You don't have to make a sacrifice on the altar anymore. And uh, some of the things people are trying to bring you back into, it's not even worth looking at again. And, uh, hallelujah. Talk to somebody in your row and say, I won't turn back. 
Hallelujah. I have a high priest now. And I have an eternal sacrifice that, that was made for me at Calvary. And I, I hear the praise team singing, you don't have to kill a lamb anymore. Don't, don't have to smear any blood on the door because Jesus has taken the place of the lamb and he is the great I am. So uh, he explains to them that everything people are giving you issues about, uh, things that people are trying to get you to compare your salvation with, what you have now is better. Hallelujah. Talk to three people real quick and say it's better now. It's better now. It's better now. I, I may not be in your group, but where I am, it's better now. I, I may have lost some friends, but where I am now is much better better. Life now is sweet and my joy and, uh, and the joy that I have the world did not give it to me and the world can't take it. Listen, uh, don't let nobody make you feel bad because uh, you have the Holy Ghost. No, you, you want to hug on yourself and, uh, and think about where God brought you from. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm, uh, I'm glad I got this Holy Ghost. I'm glad I speak in tongues. I, I'm glad he has anointed me. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. That, uh, Satan had me bound, but he, he lifted me. Uh, I was on my way to hell, but he turned me around. And uh, even in church, you got to remind people sometimes that uh, I'm better now. Look at somebody and say, I don't care what you say. I'm better now. I'm better now. I'm, I'm going through. And yes, you, you may catch me crying sometimes. But it's still better. Yes, you, you may see me walking around with my, hallelujah, with tears coming down my face. But it's still better now. Better now. Better in my mind. Better in my spirit. Better, better. I talk. Better. I walk better. Hallelujah. I'm on my way to a better place. Lift your hands and say, thank God it's better now. <laughs> Hallelujah. They folks were coming around trying to twist them and uh, trying to provoke them to walk away and uh, I don't know who I'm talking to today but uh, the enemy is trying to provoke you to, to walk away to give up Hallelujah. So the author of the book of Hebrews is endeavoring to strengthen their faith in Jesus Christ. And he's doing it by expressing the superiority and the finality of God's re revelation, rather, as it pertains to redemption. Let me explain because one of the arguments was how could you walk away from the law? You're not religious anymore. Now that's the truth. Testify and tell somebody I'm not religious anymore. I can't be saved and religious at the same time. Hallelujah. And uh, some of you didn't catch that. But uh, if I get wrapped up in religion, that means I'm only here to follow the rules. That's all I know. That's all I understand. But salvation is as such that when Jesus saved me, he gave me a personal relationship with him. He is the author. And 
the finisher of my faith. It is easy to be religious. Hallelujah. But it is more difficult and even, hallelujah, more relenting at times to walk a saved walk. Why? Because I'm warring with myself. I'm warring against the world. And I'm dealing sometimes even with my own thoughts. And I praise God for the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost then speaks to me and helps me put the pieces of the puzzle together. When I don't understand, he opens my understanding. When I, when I don't know what to say, he says, open your mouth and I'll speak for you. When I, when I don't know how to govern my own thoughts, he says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I don't know how some of y'all could live without the Holy Ghost. I don't get it. I don't understand how you can just go through the motions and never receive. You have no understanding. You you have nothing leading you. You, you have no protection. How can you just go through the motions? How, how can you just be satisfied with uh, joining the board or paying your tithes or being a member of a branch? Uh, hallelujah, baby, if you have the Holy Ghost, uh, you get more than a branch. I'll give you the whole thing. I'll, uh, I'll give you everything you need uh, if you would just let me walk and talk through you. Uh, hallelujah. So he is trying to bring them uh, to a place where they understand uh, and they're happy about the fact that they are saved. Uh, they are spirit filled believers uh, and I'm glad about it. <laughs> Look at somebody say I'm a spirit filled believer. Uh, I'm not just a member of a church. Uh, hallelujah. I'm not just all dressed up on the outside but I, I've got Jesus on the inside he is the joy of my salvation so he says all you need is this sure enough salvation you, you don't need any substitutes you don't need to mix anything with what Christ has given you so three things he says in his writings number one hold fast to your confession of Jesus Christ yes he's my savior yes I worship him him. Uh, hallelujah. You ought to love him enough to own him everywhere you go. Uh, have you ever been in love? Uh, look at somebody and ask them, have you ever been in love? Uh, and they'll know you're in love. Uh, you don't even have to say it because every time you talk, uh, you say their name. Uh, you can't even eat breakfast without uh, thinking about them. You can't lay down without uh, thinking about them that's how I feel about Jesus I love him in the morning I love him in the afternoon I love him at night I just love him and every time I open my mouth I gotta tell somebody he's my savior he's everything to me anybody know what I'm talking about tell somebody on your I'm just crazy about the man I love Jesus he, he's my savior and I, when storms are raging he, he's my shelter hey God I, I can't help myself even when I think about him a praise springs up out of my spirit it don't matter what I'm going through when I think 
of the goodness of Jesus and all that he that he's done for me. I gotta praise him. 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 Oh, I wish I could touch my neighbor right now, but not. just lay your hand on yourself and say, I refuse to give him up. I refuse to give up Jesus. I love him. He's the lover of my soul. He's my peace. He's my, he's my joy. I love him. I love him. I love him so much that I, I can't live without him. Hallelujah. You may not understand it, but I, I almost died in my sins. And he saved me. You may not understand it, but I almost lost my mind. And he kept me. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Scream at somebody and say, and I won't give him up. No. Not yet, he said. And the second thing he says, I want y'all to grow up in here. I want you to become mature children. I want you to come to a place where, where there's some meat on your spiritual bones. Where you're not wearing your feelings on your shoulders. Because the devil is going to try you. He's going to try to twist your mind. And I, he's going to try to put holes in your praise and steal your joy. And you got to grow up in God. You got to be able to come to a place where you say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Hey, go to somebody, tell him I don't mean no harm. But you better grow up. And you better grow up quick. Because the closer we get to Jesus coming, the more the enemy is going to fight you. And you can't be wishy-washy. You can't walk around acting like a three-year-old with your thumb in your mouth. Take the thumb out of your mouth and put a praise in there. And say, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth I've been drinking milk long in love I need some meat in my belly and though sometimes life is bitter I still have my salvation hallelujah and the third thing the writer wants them to understand that I, I don't want you to turn back the condemnation by abandoning your salvation. Look at somebody again and say, don't turn back. No, because what Jesus has done in your life, you can't buy it with money. What Jesus has done in your life, there's not enough silver or gold to pay for what God has invested in you. He said, I didn't buy you with anything on this earth. I didn't use silver or gold. But I took my blood. Yes, I did. And I bought you with my own blood. What can wash away my sins? I feel like preaching in here. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, 
oh precious he is that flow that makes me white as snow no other fount I know nothing but the plan of Jesus I looked one more time and I see the writer trying to persuade them to press on and to be consistent in their relationship with God don't stop praying because you're hurting don't shut down your praise because they're talking about you don't be so angry until you punish God and stop talking the God the devil is a liar your salvation is too precious for you to let anything taint your relationship with God look at your neighbor and say it means too much to me to let anything mess it up I won't even let how you feel about me shut down this relationship I've come too far and you don't know the hell that God had to bring me out of and I didn't come out of hell just to go back to hell the devil is a liar I made up my mind when I said yes Lord that I meant heaven all the way thank you father so the writer says I need to have this discussion with you because if you want to stay saved if you want to hold on to your salvation then you ought to give more earnest heed to the things that you've heard lest any time you should let them slip he said there's too many sliding saints too many slip ups from the pulpit to the door now in the Greek he is describing someone who is drifting away the waves are rough and instead of getting closer to the shore they're drifting away losing their joy losing their zeal coming out of holiness hallelujah I need you to help me preach and tell somebody God didn't save you so you could lose out talk back to the devil and say I'm gonna hold on and see what the end is gonna be here I heard David said my foot almost slipped but my God he caught me right on time and he brought me out of this horrible pit set my foot on a rock and establish my goings can we have church in here so we said listen time for you to stop slipping around and walk like you know who Jesus is live through the power of the Holy Ghost get it right on the inside thank you Lord because if the word that was spoken was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward he's referring to the law he said now if you were punished after going against the law how much more do you feel under grace 
If you walk away from this salvation, it's double jeopardy. Because under grace, I don't need a lamb. I don't have to come to church with a knife and a sacrifice. Hallelujah. Jesus did everything for me. And I, I had to give up my filthy garment. And he gave me a robe of pure white. Look at your neighbor and say, Jesus did everything for us. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left the crimson stain, but he washed me. I was too filthy. I was too weak to cleanse myself. So he took his blood and washed me. And by faith, through grace, I'm saved. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I stepped in the water. The water was cold. Chilled my body. But not my soul. Put me down. In the name of Jesus. And when I got up. Everything looked shiny new. But I heard a missionary say. That ain't all son. Get down on your knees. Lay on the altar. And call on the name of Jesus. She said cause they. That call on the name of Jesus. Shall be saved. I said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. G, 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 G. I said, Jesus, Jesus. And I heard the missionary say, Press your way, baby. I said, G, 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 G. I looked around. I said, somebody, I hear somebody else talking. She said, get back there, baby. That ain't you, that's God. I went back to saying, Jesus, G, 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 Jesus, till something got a hold of my tongue. Yalla, wo, wo, shandara. Yalla, wo, shandara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. And if anybody asks you, what's the matter with me? Tell them I'm saved. I'm sanctified. Holy Ghost filled. Fire baptized. Lay your hand on somebody's shoulder and say, Holy Ghost makes it real. Real joy, real power, real love. Touch him again and say, Holy Ghost makes it real. You ain't real, baby. If you don't have no Holy Ghost, real, real joy, real, real joy. Say yeah! Thank you, Father. Thank you. So we said, I know you're under attack because you're saved now. I know the devil wants you back. And the world is fighting against you. And there's some even in the church who have flipped the script. And they don't feel all this is necessary. But look at your neighbor and say, I thank God that the Lord saved me. And if you don't want to go to heaven, uh, 
Get out of my way. Because I'm on my way to heaven. And I'm so glad. I may have to cry sometime, but I'm still on my way. I may feel hurt sometime, but I'm still on my way. I may go through some trouble, but I'm still on my way. So we said, listen, stop drifting and get a grip. How can we neglect? How can you take it for granted? How can I just lay it down? How can you just give it up? How can you just walk away from it? It ought to mean too much. Testify to somebody and say my salvation means everything to me. Hallelujah. More to me than anything. Hey, Lord. He says it's a great salvation. Spring down your road and say what I have is a great salvation. It's great because God loved me enough to save my soul. He looked beyond my faults and he saw my knees. He loved me when I didn't love myself. Did you hear what I said? Look at your neighbor say he loved me. Yes he does. Unconditional love. I don't understand why he would love somebody like me but I'm glad about it yeah yeah that's why Paul said but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us salvation is great hallelujah because of God's grace unmerited favor I don't deserve to be here I should have died in my sin but grace knocked on my door and said come up a little higher amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm found I was blind but now I see it's great because of God's mercy thank you Lord no wonder David said great is your mercy towards me O oh Lord get a hold of somebody and say neighbor what should have happened he didn't let it happen he saved me saved 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 hallelujah it's great because it's a gift I had a debt I couldn't afford to pay so he gave it to me salvation look at your neighbor say he gave it to me salvation he gave it to me it's great because he gave me access being saved affords me the privilege to step into God's presence and say here I am Lord I come to bow down before you and I know in his presence is the fullness of joy and at his right hand there's pleasure evermore this salvation is great because he has blessed us 
with all spiritual blessing. Uh, look at your neighbor uh, and say, let's keep it spiritual. Because uh, what I have inside uh, is better than my car. Uh, what I have inside uh, is better than my house. Uh, better than my job. Uh, say it. Yeah. That's why Paul said, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm blessed from the inside out. I got everything I need on the inside. Say yeah. Say it like you mean it. Say it like you know it. I'm saved and I'm blessed. Blessed. Say it out of your mouth. I can't hear you. Yeah. Blessed in my mind, blessed in my spirit, blessed in the valley, blessed in the mountain. As long as I've got this salvation, I know I'll be all right. Say yeah, say yeah, say yeah. I feel a praise in here. I feel the Holy Ghost praise. Wait out on the inside. How many of you just glad to be saved? How many of you glad the Lord bless you? Just glad to be in the number among the redeemed, among the people of God. Wait a minute. Think about where he brought you from uh, to get you where you are right now. Wait a minute. Uh, think about the mess uh, he helped to clean up. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, think about all uh, the struggles you had. Uh, and he brought you out uh, and put you right there. Uh, you ought to praise him. You ought to glorify him. You ought to lift your hand and scream out the Holy Ghost praise. You don't know like I know. I'm not going to let you praise him for me. I'm going to praise him for myself. Because my salvation means more to me than anything. Shout out a praise. Shout out a hallelujah. Scream it out. Let everybody hear it. Ooh, I'm so glad. Ooh, I'm so happy in my spirit. I got to praise him. I came here to praise him. I came here to shout a while because he brought me out. Scream at your neighbor. I say he brought me out and I won't turn back. I'm going to praise him right here for my salvation. I'm going to give him glory for my salvation. You don't know what he saved me from. I should be in the grave right now. But I'm here, and I heard the word say, let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Raise your hand, refuge, and shout out a Holy Ghost praise. Oh, yeah.
opens he opens up the second chapter by saying we ought to give the most earnest heed to what we have heard lest at any time they slip away he's talking to the drifters and here's the wisdom of the text because by the time he gets to verse 3, he's talking about, he's using the word neglect. So if you can continue to drift, you'll end up in the place of neglect. You'll go from a drifter to being a neglector. And he says, how, how could you allow that to happen in your life? You ought to fight to hold on to this joy. <laughs> Dig in and fight to hold on to this praise. Hold on to this way of life. It, it should mean so much to you. All of these things pertaining to your salvation. He said, how can we neglect and if briefly he's discussing that God's word was so precious that he would send angels down from heaven to speak to men's lives and hand it down to one he even goes as far as saying so much so until when the Lord really wanted to bless us he sent his only son. He wrapped his word in flesh and sent his son to save us from our sins. He gave his life just so you could sit in that chair. How could you just walk away? After all, Christ has invested in you the suffering, the shame. He became poor so you could be rich. He came in the likeness of sinful flesh. There was no guile found in his mouth. But he took on our transgressions. He bore our sins. He even went to hell so we wouldn't have to go and he got up on the third day with all power in his hand. And he didn't stop there. He put himself in you. It's him walking through you. It's his spirit in your hands, in your feet. Yeah. I know people think we're crazy when we talk this way, but just look at somebody. I don't care how they look at you and say, Jesus is inside me right now. He's in here right now. And I know they may look at you like you don't believe, but listen, he's not just in me, but if I touch you the right way, you'll feel it too. I think they just touched somebody on the shoulder and said, Jesus, Jesus. Salvation means more to me than anything. They were giving up some of them because of the turmoil. If you read your Bible, you'll see in the book of Matthew where they ask Jesus, tell us what are the signs? How will we know the end is near? And you know it, you can quote it with me. He said there'll be wars, rumors of wars, kingdom against kingdom. He gives them a whole list and then he stops and says, wait a minute, but these are only the beginning of signs. It's the closer we get to his return, the worse things are going to get. 
Yeah. None but the righteous shall see. I dare say to you, you're really going to have to make up your mind about holding on to your salvation. Now, we're under grace now. But if you are unfortunate enough to miss the rapture, and the only choice you will have is giving your life, read the book. Those who don't take the mark of the beast, those who will not accept the mark of the beast, how will you buy and sell? You won't be able to travel. And many will lose their heads because they did not accept the mark of the beast. And accepting the mark is more than just having a mark on your head, or on your wrist, in your palm of your hand, but it's worshiping the beast as well. Now, under grace, we have to give up our sins. We have to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. But if you're caught in tribulation period, you have to give your head. Now, some of y'all have an issue cutting your hair. You have an issue giving up cigarettes and giving this up. But if the only choice you have then is giving your life, what are you going to do? Get it right now. You won't have to worry about later if you get it right now. Lift those hands. Perhaps we need to take another look. Time for all of us from the pulpit to the door to take inventory. Yeah. Everybody. Say it with me. Everybody. Everybody has to be saved. Everybody has to have the Holy Ghost. Everybody has to live holy. Everybody. Say it with me, everybody. From the preacher to the usher. From the right side to the left side. And if there's anybody in the men's room, in the ladies' room, they got to be saved too. Lift those lifted hands. I really do believe that the Lord is prompting the church to take inventory. Check your bags. Check your stuff. Check your heart. Check your minds. Make sure you got everything you need. Everything you're supposed to have. Make sure. Make sure. I heard David say, create in me a clean heart. and renew a right spirit. Now for David to ask for a right spirit must mean that there's a wrong spirit. A right spirit. Blot out my transgressions, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Father, I've shared what you have given me to give. I pray that you take the seed that has been planted as we take inventory, as we search our hearts and minds, it is clear to us that you're getting ready to come. It is obvious. It's all in the atmosphere. Any day now, you might crack the sky. Shama. And we must be saved. We must be saved. Help us, Lord. As we search our hearts and minds, give us all what we need. If we're too far away, help us to get closer. If we're empty, fill us. If we're out, bring us in. If we're down, pick us up. Whatever is needed, Father, please. We don't want to be left behind. We are the church triumphant, Holy Ghost filled. And we want to be with you. Help us, Lord. Help us, Father. Help us, Lord. 
Jesus' name. Put those hands together. Give the Lord some praise. With a heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O Lord. Come on, let's worship. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee. Come on and worship with my hands lifted up. And my mouth filled with praise. With a heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee. Come on and sing it loud with my hands lifted up. Come on and worship. I will bless the old Lord. to minister first to those of you who have connected with us via live stream whatever you need we say all the time our God is able to supply if you're in need of prayer put your name please in the comment section so we could establish an electronic prayer line whatever the need is salvation healing deliverance our God can do just that you need prayer for your family your husband your wife your children Put it in the comment section. We're going to touch and agree. Believe in God. There's nothing too hard for him to do. We'll wait on you. We want to pray for you. Sister Robin Martin, we're praying for you. Yes, Evangelist Dorothy L. Crumpton, we're praying for you. Sister Terry Cox and Apostle Cox, praying for you. Yes, Sister Melody Christian, we're praying for your mother who is in the hospice care, praying that the Lord would touch her body. Samantha Joyner, yes, hallelujah. Sister Denise Hall, we're praying that the Lord would touch your body. Jermaine Hairston, Tanya R. Goodwin Baines, praying for complete deliverance. Cody Baines, the Elmer family. The Perry family, the Baines family, the Barnes family, and the names are still rolling in. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for these who have come for prayer. Lord, you are a prayer answering God. You're all we need, the answer to every situation, the solution to every problem, the healer of all sicknesses and diseases. We lay it all at the altar, one by one. They're coming, family by family, home by home. Father, meet their needs. Save there, right in the house. Fill them with the Holy Ghost. Bring deliverance and healing, we pray. Hallelujah. There's nothing too hard for you to do. You can reach them right where they are. We thank you, Lord. We count it done and we glorify your name. Now, right where you are, I don't care if you're in the car. Put your hands together and give the Lord some praise. Come on. Thank him for it. Thank him for it. That what he promised, he will do it. Hallelujah. Tell somebody he will do it. He will do it. He will do it. He will do it. Will do it. Glory. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. I will bless thee, O Lord, with a heart of thanksgiving. With 
Come on, let's worship with my hands lifted up. The heart of Thanksgiving. Come on, let's worship. I will bless the The altar is ready for those of you who are in the house. Come. Come. God bless you. Pastor Fields here and I want to share my joy with you. I am joyful, I am glad always to be able to worship with you Sunday after Sunday. Many of you have faithfully connected with us. Lady Fields and I talk about it always, how the people of God all over this world are taking the time to connect with Greater Refuge Temple here in our nation's capital. In our virtual sanctuary, worshiping God, praising Him in the beauty of holiness. And we'd like you to continue to connect with us. I believe God has something just for you. This is the church that's been chosen by Jesus Christ for the blessings of multitudes. And we intend to fulfill that mandate, preaching and teaching and ministering the gospel of Jesus Christ. Won't you continue to join us? If you don't have a church home, why don't you make Greater Refuge Temple your church home? Send in a request for membership or baptism or prayer. Whatever it is that you need, we're here to serve you. Admin at grtdc.org. The Lord bless you and keep you. And we look forward to fellowshipping with you on next week. Shalom, shalom.